little bit of a project today. Um, I've got this other phone which I occasionally use for stuff. It's one of those things with T-Mobile, it was cheaper to have another line that I don't use than it was to not have it, so... It's got this notification that's been on the phone for the last 73 days. And... Build a Pokemon zipline. I would like my phone to go whizzing around in a loop, and I can just leave it there all day. Time to go to Home Depot, but not the one down the street. I have to go to another one, because they stock a very specific item I'm looking for. Check out how low this van gets when you don't drive it for a couple of days. It's probably time I do something with the ceiling in this van. I'd kind of glued it back up before, but now that the cool, humid weather is here, um, it's just sagging. So yet another obnoxious thing. This is the police department for the city of Beaverton. And as you can see behind me here, there's disabled parking. Several spaces. But the problem is, you assume when you get here, you can just go up to this door. But the problem is, they don't let you in that door. You have to go all the way around the building. Going down the sidewalk here, they park all their cop cars, so they're blocking the sidewalk. They back them all in, so you can't get around them. If you want to come into the police station, and you're trying to use the disabled parking, you have to get out of your car and go through the traffic lanes in the parking lot. They tell me, oh, we're following the laws. Yeah. It'd be a lot nicer if they just got rid of this parking here altogether, or put a sign or something up saying that you can't get into the building here. Got out of Home Depot, We've got some rope and some little pulley thingies. Now we need to go over to Surplus Gizmos. All right, I got a pile of relays and switches and springs and motors and stuff. So let's head back to the house and see if any of this will do anything. Oh, oh there she goes. Coming up here is where Photo Radar likes to park, and one of the people that lives here got tired of the Photo Radar van parking in front of their house. So if you notice here, on the other side of the sidewalk, you see these giant logs uh, right there and right there? Well, the people that live there put those giant timbers out there to keep the Photo Radar van from parking in their front yard. I don't think uh, the cops are going to do anything about it, but just kind of funny. If you're putting a few things together, I made this little motorized carriage thing. Um, it's got a little 15 RPM 12 volt motor on the bottom, which is connected to an RC car wheel, uh, which rotates, and then it got pulleys on each end here. Essentially, this is how it worked. Take your paracord here, goes around this drive pulley, and the idea with this was I wanted this wheel to be used so it was nice and slippery, so that this rope, as you can see, could slide over it, because I wanted this to be able to turn to move this old trolley along the line, but when it got to the other end, I wanted it to be able to continue, for this thing to continue spinning without damaging anything. So you can see here, there's just enough slip on this so that it could keep turning. Because uh, I was planning on using timer relays, that was the idea there, but unfortunately this little guy is not powerful enough to do what I wanted. Uh, luckily this is the first of several options, and uh, I'm gonna go back over to Surplus Gizmos and uh, get some storage unit run. Look at all that stuff in there. Yeah. Back to the hobby shop. Gotta get some other supplies. We now have our supplies, and I'm convinced uh, this is gonna be the most dangerous powered Pokemon zipline ever if not the only one ever. So, we've got some uh, three blade propellers, uh, some battery adapters so I can hook up pretty much any battery, prop the motor adapter, and here's the best part, a uh, Traxxas 550 motor. Uh, this thing will run on 12 volts. Look how big this thing is. It's like uh, 15,000 RPM or something. So uh, yeah, I think this should give us, uh, could potentially be the first time in history that I've come to Goodwill to buy a wicker basket. They have a whole aisle of them. But for some reason, I feel like it's the perfect thing for my little project. That turned out to be an extremely productive trip to Goodwill. 
Um, got the supplies I needed, which was basically a wicker basket, a wooden spoon. It's raining and about to get dark. I think we're gonna have to wait till tomorrow to actually put these things into practice. And the other cool thing I got is uh, this sweet remote control, whoops, just pulled the antenna apart, little camera platform. It's got a bunch of different options here for different speeds and things you can turn and do. Oh, and did I mention it's actually a tank? I'm gonna take this thing apart and it's gonna become a mobile tracked um, camera platform. Audio Technica noise canceling headphones, 13 bucks. And they actually work really well. Not sure if that color is showing up, but outside right now, that's what I refer to as hurricane lighting. When the sky is this sort of like yellowy, orangey color and everything just glows. It's usually how it looks right before there's gonna be some severe weather. I kinda need to come up with a name for this thing. But, um, hang on, it's kind of dark in here. There we go. I need to come up with a name for this thing still, but this is going to be the Pokemon sled. So what we have here, these are clothesline separators. They have little rollers on the top. On this end, we have the super dangerous Traxxas motor. Hose clamped on here, put a little bit of hot glue on there to minimize the vibration. And if you're wondering what this stick is, that's right, it's a spoon. Spoon has been hot glued and zip tied. Come on, safety. Basically we'll get our um, 100 foot length of paracord, hang this thing on it. So the idea is we're gonna run the 100 feet of paracord kind of up at an angle. And the timer relay, I'm gonna have to figure out how long it takes this thing to go from one end to the other. And I'll set up the timer relay to only turn this thing on long enough to get it up to the high end. Gravity will take over and it'll glide back down to the bottom. I think this should be, um, if nothing else, super dangerous. I had to switch to a super complex labeling system for my coffee. The Mr. Yuck actually started because uh, someone found it in the fridge and thought it was iced tea and this stuff is concentrated. And then I just poured it into this container, which I know it looks like two stroke oil. But I assure you, coffee actually came in this originally, and when I use that up, I'm using it for my own container now. So that basically means non-diluted, straight coffee. Uh, then here we have a picture of the Space Needle, because this is Seattle's best coffee, which is not diluted. And it's Seattle's best uh, dark roast, because Batman, dark. Wicker basket of doom here, all set up. Um, we've got a timer relay here on the side which you can use to adjust how many seconds that this blade spins. Uh, we've got the uh, NIMH batteries in here, but this timer relay, no matter how hard I try, would not run off that battery pack. It's supposed to run on 24 volts. So I've got two nine volt batteries here, which I've series together, clipped on here like this. I think the fan's off, we'll find out in a second. Okay, so these get clipped on here to power it, and then you can hear that relay clicking. You can adjust this timer for pretty much any range you want. I feel like though it's not very well balanced. I may have to hang a counterweight off of this other side here. As per usual, the second I try to do anything it starts raining. But anyways, we've got a length of this paracord set up here. Well, I got stuck on the knot on the other end, but it totally seems to work. We're not at enough of an uphill slope, but at least we can tell it travels up just fine. This thing's just using little plastic wheels with pins going through them. So yeah, this is great. Uh, this will totally work. <laughs> that time it hit hard enough to knock off one of the alligator clips on the battery. Anyway, as you can see here, uh, it's just basically tangling up with that knot, um, which I figured I would have to tie in some uh, 
little stops or something like that anyways for it. But this isn't much of a decline. Well, actually, if I make the rope tighter, it'd probably help. But I mean, it'll coast down here a little bit. But then it just stops. Plus, I think this paracord might actually be stretching. If I can tighten this up a little more here. I figured it out. Version two is gonna have two motors. I'm gonna put another one over on this side, and that way I can just have it on a flat piece of string. I can install some sort of stops on the rope. Um, I'm amazed, this paracord's been way more stretchy than I thought it would be. I'm gonna go grab another motor. Uh, I've already got props. Um, I might have to grab some more batteries. I don't know how this one's gonna like living life after all this with two motors, but uh, yeah, this will be great. Gonna end it right there. We at least know this thing works now. Proof, another proof of concept. So, ew, the cat's over here puking. What you doing there? Not my cat, it came with the house. Effective way to cheat playing Pokemon Go.